Buenos dias, uh, Feliz Cinco de Mayo. It's the 5th of May today. Hello again, 241 days left in the year. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel, click a like, share this with a friend. The more people we have here, the better fun we can have sharing the gospel and looking into some fun facts for today. Let's start off with a scripture in Psalm 3.3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of mine head. For those that want to read the Bible in the year, you're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19 and 20 and Luke chapter 23, verses 1 to 25. Here's some thoughts for today. Man's horizons are bounded by his vision. The presence of trouble does not mean the absence of God. God owes us nothing but gives us everything. Some great thoughts for today. Your motivation for today. In any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing. Think about the soccer goaltender during the penalty shot. Don't do nothing. On this day in history, Napoleon Bonaparte dies in 1821. He's in exile on the island of St. Helena. 1862, the Mexican army defeats the French in the Battle of Puebla. And today, celebrated as Cinco de Mayo, mostly in California. It's uh, not as big a celebration in Mexico, but to all our Spanish-speaking friends, happy Cinco de Mayo. 1961, astronaut Alan Shepard becomes the first American in space aboard Freedom 7. And it's just 23 days after the Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man to orbit the Earth. And in 1988 was the first live television broadcast made from the summit of Mount Everest. That's done by Japanese TV. And in 1994, in South African general election, the ANC, African National Congress Party, headed by Nelson Mandela, wins the election with 63% of the popular vote. Here's a personal story for today. Hebrews 12, verse 1. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And we'll take a look in Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. This topic is in stark contrast to what we've been studying in Ecclesiastes. We are encouraged to mirror Christ's suffering and sacrifice towards our fellow man and our church brethren. Today's verses compel us to make such an attempt ourselves. This part of Hebrews describes the life of a believer as a race. An interesting picture considering Ecclesiastes' cyclical metaphors. Even a race held on a circular track in an arena has a finish line, at a point when the race starts and stops. As uh, verse 2 points out, the prize awaits us after the race is over. The portrait painted here is of Christ who ran a course none of us could duplicate. He is the supreme king over all creation, and he did not enjoy life of ease, peace, and luxury. His, he faced shame, opposition, suffering throughout his ministry, especially on the cross. Ecclesiastes might have motivated him to enjoy life on earth while it lasted, but Hebrews makes it clear that Christ's ultimate joy was yet to come. He had a vision that the world held nothing, it's what awaited him and the promise for us that by fulfilling his father's plan to the point of death on the cross, that we could live forever, that we could have access to the holiest of holies and hallelujah for that. So the command to us then is to persevere, cast aside anything that might slow us down or stop us altogether. Ecclesiastes is right in saying that we should have a grateful attitude uh, and appreciate and enjoy the good things God gives us. But our own satisfaction shouldn't be the goal we're running towards. You've heard before, the pursuit of happiness is like a dog chasing the tail. You'll never get there. And it will end up depressing you even more. Pursue God and let him be the, the joy and finisher of your faith. Uh, so our eyes should be fixed on Christ. His example gives us added encouragement we need when the less enjoyable seasons come our way. Take a mental inventory of everything you own. What do you have that exists purely for personal enjoyment? 
Uh, consider selling those items. Downsizing is is a big thing. Uh, you know, uh, donate to the mission fund. Help out somebody in need. You know, ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart and your home for any extras that hinder you spiritually and ask for the resolve to give them up and run the race of a Christian journey. You, you will have a much more prosperous and enjoyable life. That is what Christ chose to do, even if it seems over the top for us. Here's some devotional thoughts for today. It's crucial to, to distinguish between personal wrongs, which we must be willing to forgive, and deliberate attacks on the gospel of Christ, which the Lord will judge. Paul drew this distinction in his letter to his young friend, Timothy. First, Paul wrote with respect to an opponent of the gospel. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. Uh, may the Lord repay him accordingly to his works. You must also be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. And you can look that up in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. Now, the harm Alexander has done to Paul was not to him personally, but to his message. And he is now engaged in stirring up opposition to Timothy's proclamation of the gospel. Then, as if to plainly contrast and distinguish between those who oppose God's work and those who personally wrong us, Paul followed with these gracious words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsake me. May it not be charged against them. And that's 2 Timothy 4.16. How sad that Paul's fellow Christians would desert the apostle in his hour of deep need. What should be done to them? Surely they're deserving of his righteous anger. Not so, Paul said, may it not be charged against them. Lord, help us to be gracious to him. We remember Jesus on the cross. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And we've talked about this. We can choose to carry the burden and the sack around. It's pretty heavy. Lay it down, forgive, and know that God forgives you. For we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've made mistakes. And it's just wonderful that we have a loving Savior that went before us and set such a wonderful example. And how about going into the wilderness? Hebrews 3, 8. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Now, the children of Israel would not obey the authority of God while they were in the wilderness. For their disobedience, they did not go into Canaan, the land of milk and honey. Uh, they perished in the wilderness. Uh, what Now, what is your wilderness? What are you holding on to and not letting God have control? Is it your trust, your family? Uh, maybe there's a relationship, uh, your job. Do you uh, choose to do a thing rather than trust God to do his perfect choice for your life? Often we make the wrong choices in life and we end up missing the blessing in store for us. If we would only choose to do the things that are right in his sight, just think how much better life would be. Ah, you know, we're humans, we're free thinkers. Sometimes we rely on our own flawed knowledge to get us through life. And, and uh, again, God is a great creator. He gave us all these amazing tools that we can get lulled into the sense that, hey, I can do things on my own, but we can get the overflow if we rely on God to, uh, to give us the increase. So we forget that with Jesus, life can be blessed beyond our thoughts and imagination. So hold on to that thought for today. And again, that's the end for today. Uh, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. Think of somebody you could invite to, to uh, look at these uh, daily devotionals daily, somebody that might need it. Uh, again, as we've said, we're, we're heading into the 90s, almost up to episode 100. And the reason for this is that it, it's a great 10-minute exercise. Doesn't take a lot of commitment to show up daily, and, uh, and hopefully you get something out of it, something fun, something enjoyable, and a challenging thought that maybe can be a discussion point uh, around your workplace or with your friends and family as the days go on. Here's your fun facts for today. Until the 19th century, solid blocks of tea were used as money in Siberia. And the earth weighs approximately, wait for it now, I think that's six quintillion, 588 quadrillion tons. I don't know. They've got a scale somewhere that was able to measure that. Here's your closing thought. B what you want the world to be.
I have a joke. Two men were sitting at the bar and they were talking. They said, hey, I have my IQ check. It's 175. Well, the other responded, that's a coincidence. So is mine. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a physicist, was the reply. Again, that's a coincidence. So am I. So this was overheard at the nearby table, and the two compared their IQs. They were 160. Amazingly, they were both brain surgeons. At another table nearby, one man despondently said to the other, did you hear that? I had my IQ checked, and it was only 52. They said, wow, that's a coincidence. Mine is too. What instrument do you play? That's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless.